Apart from the fact that correlated equilibrium models certain uh, situations, certain real world situations much better than mixed strategy Nash equilibrium as we have discussed in the case of uh, uh, the friends, two friends uh, watching a football or soccer game um, or uh, in, in the case of traffic signal game. Uh, correlated equilibrium also had another advantage which is in its computational tractability. We have uh, we saw that uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is difficult to solve uh, and in particular that is a hard problem, uh, uh, computationally hard problem, but uh, that does not apply to correlated equilibrium. So let us look at what are the set of inequalities uh, uh, and equalities we need to solve we need to satisfy in order to make a, a, a correlated strategy to be a correlated equilibrium. So this is this condition one that we have written here is directly coming from the, uh, the first principles. So we have just written down the definition of correlated equilibrium and this inequality is, uh, is satisfied for all every SI and SI prime and for all players i in n. And the second set of inequalities is just the, the feasibility that uh, these are valid probability distributions. So uh, each of these numbers uh, pi of s should be non-negative and they should sum to 1. So now notice that uh, instead of uh, the, the, uh, the variables being individual probability masses uh, of over all the strategies of a specific player, this is now the, uh, the correlated strategy is a probability distribution over strategy profile. So therefore, the optimization variables here is uh, just pi of s, so which is which is appearing on, on this side here and also here. Uh, so contrast this with the similar expression which we had for uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. There we had sigma 1 s1 multiplied by sigma 2 s2 and so on. So that was actually giving rise to a, a, a product form of these variables, which is a nonlinear optimization problem, and that was not very easy to solve. While here, uh, all the uh, inequalities are actually linear uh, inequalities, and that is giving so that that makes the uh, problem of finding correlated equilibrium a linear program. So now let us look at how many uh, inequalities that we are uh, trying to solve. Uh, so just uh, comparing the, the number of inequalities, we can get one idea that uh, how easy it is to solve. Of course, uh, we are not uh, considering this nonlinear uh, optimization problem in, in, the case of, uh, in the case of Nash equilibrium. Uh, we are going to compare this just from the counting the number of, uh, number of inequalities that we need to solve. So here we have, uh, because this inequality here has to be satisfied for all SI, SI prime. So there, uh, so there will be m square uh, number of inequalities if we assume the cardinality of uh, uh, each of these players, cardinality of the uh, strategy sets of each of these players to be equal to m, then there should be m square such inequalities for every player. So therefore together there will be order of n m square number of inequalities. This uh, the second inequality in the second condition uh, where we have the non-negativity constraint. This number becomes a little larger because there are uh, m to the power n number of uh, possible strategy profiles in this case. So therefore, this actually increases uh, accordingly, and the final one is just one. Now, these inequalities together uh, represent the feasibility LP. So even in the case of uh, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, we solved a feasibility LP uh, where we have written down the conditions for becoming a, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And uh, feasibility LP uh, just means that uh, the objective function is a constant. So you don't really care about the objective function, you just care about uh, solving this uh, inequalities. So solving this uh, feasibility LP will give you one correlated equilibrium in this case. So let us now contrast uh, that how many number of uh, uh, cases inequalities that uh, it is being it is solving in the case of C and vis-a-vis uh, -vis with the MSNE. So in MSNE, the total number of support profile itself was two to the power m times n. 
So if you remember, we defined a uh, number called k, which was uh, uh, exhaustively listing all possible uh, supports. And there were uh, 2 to the power cardinality of SI minus 1 number of uh, supports in uh, for every, every player. And we have taken the product over all players. So since this uh, cardinality is equal to n, and you are multiplying all these uh, n uh, over n players, this becomes uh, 2 to the power m times n. So this many number of support profiles you have. And for each of those support profiles, we are going to solve uh, one feasibility program, which is a nonlinear uh, feasibility program. So not considering that fact, still you have a lot of uh, a search, uh, a lot of support profiles to search over. So uh, in the case of uh, uh, correlated equilibrium, we have uh, only the order of m to the power n, that is the only bottleneck. Uh, because uh, if you look at this, this is much smaller, uh, this uh, number of how many number of uh, inequalities we are handling you know, for the case of uh, uh, for satisfying this condition one, uh, the, the only bottleneck is in the second part. So even if we look at these two numbers, order of 2 to the power mn and order of, two to, uh, order of m to the power n, we can see that this is uh, actually exponentially smaller because if you look at the log uh, of these two numbers, uh, the log of this will give you mn, while log of this will give you uh, n times log of m. And even though the, the first term is same here, uh, the second term is exponentially smaller in the case of correlated equilibrium. So correlated equilibrium not only gives you less number of uh, inequalities, it is also giving uh, each of these uh, uh, inequalities are actually linear inequalities. So it is much easier to solve. On top of that, you can also look at some of the optimization objectives because we have seen that there exists uh, multiple uh, correlated equilibrium. Uh, for instance, in the case of uh, the traffic signal game, we have seen that there are multiple correlated equilibrium uh, for a football or cricket game. Also, there are multiple correlated equilibrium. Now, the question comes, which uh, correlated equilibrium uh, should we choose? And that can be resolved by solving the same feasibility program uh, with, a, with an objective function. So now it's a full-fledged uh, linear program with a, a properly defined objective function. Uh, on the in the constraint set we have all the constraints for uh, uh, becoming this uh, correlated equilibrium so all these uh, constraints that are written here but i we might be interested in uh, for instance finding that correlated equilibrium which maximizes the sum of the utilities of all these players so that could be one feasible objective and that gives rise to uh, different kind of uh, different kind of objectives gives rise to different correlated equilibrium now we have uh, defined a new equilibrium concept in, in correlated equilibrium. It is a little different from the, uh, the previous uh, concepts uh, that we have discussed because all of those were uh, strictly looking at the agent uh, level view and uh, not cooperating with each other. But uh, the correlated equilibrium is in some sense uh, not cooperating directly but uh, via mediator. So it is a correlated equilibrium. That's why the name also says that it is coordinating with the multiple players and taking that decision. So how does it compare with the, how does it uh, connect uh, this equilibrium uh, with the uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium concept? We can actually show that for every mixed strategy Nash equilibrium sigma star, there exists a correlated equilibrium pi star. And the construction of that pi star, so uh, what does this mean? That we can find a correlated equilibrium for every game where there exists a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And the construction is uh, really simple. You just take the product of all these uh, sigma, sigma i stars. So we had the, so let's say we have a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium profile sigma 1 star, sigma 2 star and so on to sigma n star. Uh, all that we are doing is uh, to define the pi, let's say pi star, uh, correlated equilibrium of S, uh, we are just uh, taking the corresponding product. So sigma 1 star of S1, that is the probability mass that you are associating uh, with that strategy of player 1, uh, times uh, sigma 2 star of S2, similarly sigma n star uh, Sn. 
So this uh, particular structure of uh, the uh, correlated strategy uh, is claimed to be a correlated equilibrium as well. And I leave that as an exercise. It's not very difficult. All that uh, uh, you can use, you need to use, uh, here is a hint, you'll have to use the MSNE characterization result. The characterization result which says that um, for all the uh, uh, for all the strategies on the support of, uh, of a mixed strategy, uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, uh, your utility should be same, expected utility should be same and that should be greater than or equal to all the strategies, uh, the expected utilities in at all the strategies which is outside that support. Uh, in fact, you can write the inequality for all the uh, uh, strategies and that, and that is in S, SI. So this using this fact that uh, you are using this uh, MSNE characterization and using this uh, uh, substitution for uh, pi i star, you can show that pi star, pi star is essentially a correlated equilibrium. So that theorem essentially gives us this uh, bigger picture. So we have already seen that uh, strongly dominant strategy equilibrium is also a weakly dominant strategy equilibrium. Weakly dominant strategy equilibrium is also P PSNE. PSNE is uh, uh, definitely a special case of an MSNE. Now we have also shown that MSNE for every game that has an MSNE, uh, you can always construct a correlated equilibrium. So therefore this uh, structure, uh, so this is the space of games which admits an SDAC. This is the space of games which admit an SDA, uh, WDAC and so on. And this set uh, keeps on increasing in this way. So uh, the largest uh, set is this correlated equilibrium. It's the most relaxed uh, equilibrium concept, and therefore the the set of uh, games that has a correlated equilibrium is the largest. So let us uh, make our uh, short summary. So far, uh, we have uh, so far discussed only normal form games. Um, and uh, we have uh, looked at the definitions like rationality, intelligence, common knowledge, and we have discussed with examples. Uh, uh, we have distinguished between what is a strategy and what is an action, looking at cer certain kinds of games. Uh, we have looked at dominance, which were strict and weak, and the corresponding equilibria concepts were defined as a strongly dominant strategy equilibrium and weakly dominant strategy equilibrium. Um, then we went to the definition of uh, unilateral deviation. So if one player unilaterally deviates and does not get better off, then we call those those strategy profiles as uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Its generalized version is a uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium and its existence is guaranteed. Then we also looked at the characterization result of MSNE. Uh, but the computing side, we have seen that it is, it is hard to compute. Then we went to this uh, uh, scenario where we uh, use the trusted mediator and go to correlated strategies and there we also have defined a correlated equilibrium. 